Okay, in today's video, we are going to make a pumpkin roll, which I know a lot of people are scared of. So you're gonna see me adding all my dry ingredients in now, and I'm gonna have the complete recipe attached to the description in the video. So no fear about trying to know what I'm adding at this point. You just wanna make sure that you add all your dry ingredients first and all of your different seasonings first. Then you're gonna add in your wet ingredients. Um, and you're gonna see me add some eggs in. I like to add mine in while the mixer is going, but it is on a lower speed, just to kind of incorporate the eggs as I'm adding them in, as opposed to stopping and starting the mixer. But totally your call, you can do it a different way if you'd like to. And then I just slowly add in the pumpkin in the same way. And remember, you want canned pumpkin, plain pumpkin, not pumpkin pie filling. And you're just gonna add that directly in. And that's, you know, those are your liquids. And so you're just going to mix that. You're going to pop your bowl down like I'm doing here and really scrape it really well to make sure there's no dry ingredients that are stuck to the bottom of your mixing bowl. And then you're just going to turn that back on to about medium low speed and let that go for a minute to make sure everything is completely incorporated. Um, as you see here, I'm using one of the six quart KitchenAid stand mixers because I am making a double. So for instance, the recipe that I'm going to attach into the description actually makes two full-size pumpkin rolls. Um, I like to make two at a time. It just makes my life easier and they do freeze really well. So if you are thinking, I don't need two full-size full pumpkin rolls, no worries. You can freeze one, slice the other one up and serve it, and then grab the other one out of the freezer the next time you need something sweet and pumpkin-y or give one to a friend. But in this video, I'm definitely gonna be making two. So this recipe makes two full-size pumpkin rolls. As you can see there, it's a little bit of a thin batter, which is what you want, because you want it to really even out in your pan. And you're gonna need two jelly roll pans lined with parchment paper and a little bit of cooking spray, which you're gonna see me do here. So I like to spray the pan to make the parchment stick, and then I spray the parchment before I add in my actual batter. I'm using a one cup scoop that has like a little pour spout on the edge and I do about four cups per pan. It's not exact. Some of those cups may be a little bit heaping. They're not perfectly level, but that's the general rule of thumb. It keeps it from being so thick that it doesn't bake properly or that it cracks when I roll it because that's a lot of people's problem with pumpkin rolls I feel like or any kind of jelly roll cake is they make the batter too thick, too firm and it just will not roll. So as you can see, I used an offset cake spatula after I got the batter into the pan to really make sure it evened out and went to all the corners. You don't have to do that. You can just use a rubber spatula if you want, but I think the offset cake spatula would do make your life a little bit easier. And there you go. You spread them both out. I kind of do a little tap on the countertop to make sure no air bubbles are popping through there and to really even out the batter into the corners of the pan. Then you're gonna place them both into a 350 degree oven or 325 if you're using convection. And as you saw there, I just barely touched the top of it before I put the powdered sugar on top. That was just me guaranteeing that it was done. If your fingerprint kind of stays imprinted, it may not be done. You may wanna pop back in for a couple of minutes. But you wanna coat it really good with powdered sugar directly out of the oven while it's still piping hot. And then I covered it in a really thin, clean kitchen towel. And you can see all the steam rising. And then I'm gonna do another very good covering of powdered sugar all over this side. This is just keeping it from sticking completely to that towel. But you really wanna do a thin towel, maybe a flour sack type of towel, something that doesn't have a lot of fibers on it. And then you're just gonna roll it immediately. And that's key because if you let the cake cool at all, it will crack and it will not roll, it will lose its flexibility. So this is about four hours later. I let it sit on a cooling rack in that towel for roughly four hours. And now I'm adding my filling. Now you can do cream cheese, you can do vanilla buttercream, you can do whatever, ganache, whatever floats your boat. Here I'm just using a vanilla buttercream. That's what I had on hand, so that's what I'm using, that's what I prefer. But I'm not doing an overly thick coat of it. I mean, I, you want it to cover all edges, but you don't want it to be so much icing that you can't taste the pumpkin. So I've, I've added that on there, and then I start to roll it back up, pulling it at the same time away from that towel. And then I just wrap it in plastic. Now I'm gonna wrap this probably double, I think I do double in this video, and then I'm gonna pop it into the refrigerator overnight. So this is like, if a customer wanted this on a Friday, I would do all this on Thursday, and then I would put it in the refrigerator overnight, and then take it out of the plastic wrap, put it on a board like you saw in that picture, and deliver it to the customer.